Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're uh, going to work on a Quantum Blue Runner today. I don't get many of these in. They're nice reels. They're two ball bearing reels. They're along the lines of a, um, a Pen 320. It's a lightweight frame. It's a high speed reel. It's a 4.2 to 1 ratio. And it's got a uh, capacity of 220 yards with 30 pound line. So with the high speed, the heavy line, the, uh, the solid frame. This is meant for some fairly deep fishing because of the high speed will bring the line up, uh, trolling, and uh, big fish. But uh, this one just came in for a tune-up, so we're going to take it apart. We'll share with you uh, how this reel is designed internally, and uh, we'll show you how to tune this reel up if you have it. And uh, I don't think these are available new anymore. I'm not quite sure. It's, it's a couple of years since I've seen this reel. But this one's in nice condition, and uh, we'll uh, we'll take it apart and we'll do the uh, do the work on this one. So I'm just going to check before we get too far down the line. Yep, the, uh, the the pen wrench fits this the uh, handle screw, and I had to move that because the hold down screw here uh, was underneath for whatever reason. So let's start by taking off the. Um, the handle and the exterior pieces and let's start with our traditional uh, words of caution. I use a, um, a protective glove on my hand to keep uh, oils and greases out. Uh, the, I work on a lot of reels each day. This reel may not uh, be dirty but the next one may and I generally leave this on from uh, project to project. Uh, also I use a little parts tray behind me which is a bottom of a milk jug. I use that so that I can uh, take care of the uh, pieces and parts, and when I go to reinstall, I know where to look for them. All right, we're going to remove that handle screw then. This has an aftermarket handle on it. It's nice. I think it's aftermarket uh, by the knob on it. It's got one of those high-speed uh, ball bearing handles. Very nice. Uh, so we'll take the handle off, the handle screw, and uh, then we'll take this trim ring off. So Quantum is part of that group of um, companies that's in the Zebco line. So you have Zebco, you have Quantum, Rhino, you have Finor, and you have um, Van Stahl. And most of those, when I when I say those names almost all the time, we're, we will be thinking, for the most part, of uh, spinning wheels. Uh, Finor had its uh, origins in the... Uh, the deep sea market back in Miami in the 19, late 1930s, but uh, for the most part those others we don't think of as deep sea reels, but uh, regardless there's a Blue Runner series that Quantum put out, and uh, in that Blue Runner series they introduced this one, which is a level lined reel. So we're going to take it apart. I don't have the schematic for it, I wish I did, but uh, I take pictures along the way, which is another one of those little cautions I like to do, take pictures so that you know the sequence that you remove the pieces and parts and how to put them back together again uh, should you get stuck along the way. So I just took those three side plate screws out just to make sure that they're all the same size and they are so they can go to my parts tray now and uh, that, I think we should be able to remove the side plate unless they're hiding a screw under here which they are. You get used to these little tricks after a while it seems I just did a um, pen squall and they were hiding screws underneath the trim ring. So if you go to pull this out and you uh, you get a little stuck, just uh, be patient and just uh, try and look for what else might be holding it up. Sometimes you get stuck with the, uh, the little adjuster, but more times than not I would say it's they're hiding screws somewhere. They'll either hide them on the front of this I'm going to go with a micro screwdriver that's got a little bit more uh, leverage to it. I bought these micro screwdrivers at Harbor's Freight. I think they were only five or six dollars. They weren't very expensive. And that one's uh, the wrong size. But I would recommend that you, if you're going to do a lot of real repair, go, go get something like this. Because it certainly will help you down down the road. I still don't have the right one. So this is one of those machine screws 
I think it's a Japanese thread or whatever they call these things. It has the center hole to it. But at any rate, you got to find the right one. There you go. Sometimes the Phillips had to work in there, sometimes not. And again, I'll put them both on the side, although I'm expecting that these two are going to be the same size as well. And they hide under the, uh, the chrome trim ring there. And then we should be able to take the side plate off and see what we have here. I'm kind of interested in, in the design because they don't do a lot of these. So I'm kind of wondering personally what it's going to look like. Now I saw the case come up with the springs, so we can remove the case here. And uh, pretty much straightforward, pretty nice inside. There's a, a little trip mechanism here, pay attention to that. That's going to go over the stud on the back here. Uh, we have a very dry reel, so it was time to, uh, to get this one reset. And this is kind of interesting in the sense that you have an anti-reverse dog here that somehow it's going to go over this collar here and I guess we're just going to have to sight that because it doesn't look like it's built on this side for sure so we'll have to sight that when we go to put it in and try and uh, line it up that way all right there's two screws here or two screws two springs I don't know why I want to call springs screws but I do they'll go into the tray I pull that main stack off then pull off the yoke and the pinion gear and we'll just uh, we don't doesn't look like we need to do anything with this this is just clipped onto the back and it's hollow so there's nothing really going on there I posted it's riding so we'll uh, we're just going to grab this anti-reverse dog put a little bit of grease underneath that Kind of maybe even hold it in place that way. I'm sure there's a little bit of a trick there. And then we had this little washer came off. It belongs on this post here. It was riding on top of the anti-reverse dog. These are clean, so don't need to do anything here. If you did, you would uh, kind of wipe it down or brush it down. But in the case of the yoke, it's clean. I'm going to check the teeth on the the spool or pinion gear just to make sure it's clean pretty much so you can just brush off a little bit you want to check the teeth to make sure they're not bent or in any way out of order if it does you'd have to replace the, the spool gear and I'm not quite sure where you can get replacement parts for this reel only recently that I start seeing some quantum Parts sites show up, but it's only for modern reels. Then this is the lever that's going to control the free spool. I'm going to move that up to the top on this one. I'm also going to put a drop of oil in there. I generally don't like to put grease on these because that grease can clog the performance, so I'll just work it in this way. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the yoke back on. Kind of a rookie mistake. Put it on backwards, upside down. There we go. So that's that, and you'll see it moves in and out. I don't have it set yet. Kind of funny how this one has a uh, a little loop to it that uh, it's an S shape as opposed to a flat, and you have to make sure that you get that S in the right direction there, which is what we just did. All right, let's take our attention over to the main assembly. Then we have a plastic washer on the back here that doesn't need lubrication. And pull the drag washers out. This reel doesn't look used at all. Either that or it was upgraded recently to Carbon Tex. Yep, 
yeah, that, that seems to be the case. We have a solid washer here. Make sure that the internals get cleaned. If there's any dirt on there, it'll compromise the performance of the reel. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. And these are hard washers. You don't need to do any, uh, any lubrication on these. You have two keyed washers. They're flat. They almost look uh, like rectangles. And then you have one that has a circle with uh, points on the end. That's called an eared washer. So we're going to go ahead check the teeth on the main gear just like we did on the other one. Again, you can run a brush through there if you see anything. This one's been used, but uh, it's in very good condition. And we'll just go ahead and make sure we get grease onto the, the main gear here. You don't have to get it in every tooth, but uh, it will uh, work its way around. Don't overload it because if you overload it, it just squeezes out and off to the side. So uh, you're just kind of wasting grease if you uh, think that you got to get it in every tooth and glob it on there. All right, so the setup on these, I just put the first one in. It's followed by a keyed washer. Second of the drag washers. Now the eared washer always goes in the middle, and that's kind of standard for all of, all of these types of reels that have this setup. Keyed washer, or fabric washer, keyed washer. And then this big old honking uh, ferrule gear sleeve that uh, goes on top. Okay, before we attempt to, to close this one up then, we have uh, two more springs to put back on to the side case here. I want to roll that to the off position to give me the most I can out of the spring load. This one's going to be interesting. Now, I've never done this before. The, um, it doesn't appear that there's any way that you load that anti-reverse to this side case. I just believe that you have a, a spring here that that's, just doesn't have a lot of tension. And I think you just have to manipulate that by lining this up. And then, of course, you also have to get the stud on the free spool release into this socket as well. So. Uh, I think this is just kind of doing it by eyeball. I put that little metal shield here. I'm going to just put a little bit of grease on there so that that metal washer doesn't slide off as I go to try and mount that. I'm just going to turn it. I don't know if I can do this with the benefit of the camera. We'll try and we'll see. Huh, I think I pretty much I believe I got it there and then I think I have to swing this arm. There you go. I think we have it. Huh. Get lucky sometimes I guess. All right we have a free spool. No, nope, we don't have the free spool release so we have to back that out. Let's bring it back in see if we can do it that way. Free spool. Now we have the throw. So you just have to play with it a little bit I guess is the answer on that one if you have it. I don't think there's an easy way to do that, but I believe that is the way to do it. And then we'll uh, reinstall them. So we have these two small screws on this side, and once we get done with these, we'll, uh, we'll go over to the other side there, and we'll try and uh, service the spool. And I'm, it says two ball bearings, so I'm going to believe that one of those ball bearings is on the other side of the case here. So After searching for all of my micro screwdrivers, I find that the number one Phillips head seems to be working on this, so I'm going to just keep using that one on these two small ones. And then we should have a ball bearing in here, so I'm going to go uh, take that cap off as soon as we get done and put some oil on that. It might be in the spool. If it's in the spool, we'll go oil that as well. So, All right, so there go the two small ones that hide behind that metal ring. I was going to say chrome ring. I'm not quite sure if it's chrome anymore or if it's just some kind of polished metal. Regardless, it's a nice feature on it. Okay, those are the two that go there. To get that ring in, like I said, I just played around with a pen squall and it has the same thing. You bring this up about halfway so you can sneak the ring in behind it like that and flop it over. Then you can flip it to get out of the way. 
the three screws we found out were the same. So let's do the one on each side first and then do the top one. You don't want to bend these things. You don't want to get them in the wrong uh, uh, place where you get some tension on this thing. So while I'm at it, thank you all to our uh, healthcare heroes and our first responders and our essential personnel as we're trying to work every day to, to help us through this pandemic. Just when we thought we had it beat, it seems like ground two is here now and, and some of the states that didn't have it before are getting it worse than ever. And uh, here on the Northeast, it uh, looks like there's a resurgence of that as we go and open up things as well. So please stay safe, stay listening to the authorities out there, stay alert and vigilant, and please protect yourself and protect others as we try to, uh, to do that. And please, if you know a health care hero or first responder or essential personnel, thank them for what it is that they're doing. They are working in everybody's best interests. All right, before I put the adjuster on, I just want to check to see if we have the bearing here. I don't think we do. No, we just have the tensioner on this side. So the bearing should be in that spool, and we'll, uh, we'll go over to that spool in a moment, and we'll go solve that one. All right, then with all of that side plate done, we'll do that. We'll put a drop of oil into the shaft assembly. Take that handle then is next up. Unfortunately, I just I put one extra of the washers on here. One of those washers came up top and acted as the, the tension washer for the top of the reel. And we have our handle screw. This is pretty wild because this handle wasn't fitting the That's the wrong handle. So this is an aftermarket handle. There was another one in the box here. I believe that's the original one. You can tell that the, the hole is nowhere near the same. So I don't, I don't quite understand why that was switched over, but I'm going to put this one on, and if they want to go back and put the other one on, I'm going to tell you they're more than welcome to do that. To make that other one work, you really have to drill it out or file it down. And we'll put this one on for now. That explains why that other one wasn't working properly either. So I'll have to get in touch with the owner of this reel, see what he wants to do with that, uh, that other piece. But I wouldn't trust myself just with uh, the handle not holding that in, fighting a fish. That probably would be one of the early things to go. And with my luck, the handle would fall off when I've got a fish story to tell. All right, we're going to just bolt this up for now. I can see why this handle's not on there. It's leaning. It's It's been broken. So I'll get in touch with the, the owner. I'll find out what he wants to do with that. Let's come over to the other side then, service the spool, the line guide, and get done with this wheel. So we have a couple of screws here. Again, you want to take a look. I'm putting these into my parts tray, but I'm making sure that the screws are the same screws and they're not. So I'll show you that. So there's a crossbar where that one, first one went into, and that's a, a machine screw. And then we have a um, two rough threaded screws. So you can see the difference on the threading here between the three screws. That's machine screwed and that's rough thread. The rough the machine screw came through this crossbar here. Okay, we're going to remove the side plate then. This is where I don't like line. 
here's your two ball bearings then. You have a ball bearing here, and a ball bearing here, so there's one on each side of the spool. So let's put a drink of oil onto those. I'm going to remove this one. It kind of came out, but it belongs on the side plate there. I'm just checking on the side plate spool here. There's not much going on with the click gear. You want to check. You always want to do this. We go, don't assume anything. Check all the teeth on the idler gear. Make sure that they're all there. This has got grease on it. It doesn't need grease on it. It's a plastic part which is self lubricating. Just check your the side of your uh, worm gear here. Make sure that that's all good. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit more line off of this. No matter what I do it always gets trapped on the way back in anyway but if we can reinstall that. That's what I mean by trapped. It always comes up short. Gets stuck and that'll uh, inhibit your performance. We'll put the side plate cover back on, then we're going to go service the pawl, and we're going to go get in touch with our owner, find out about this uh, handle. All right, so right now we're not meshed with that uh, idler gear. You just want to turn the handle a little bit to get it to mesh. Don't go pushing anything. The machine screw Along going into the post up here. I'll go ahead and tighten that one down first. And I'm going to leave that a little bit short. I'm not going to tighten it all the way. I don't want pressure on the case as I go ahead to do this. Put that last one in there. Coming up. And that's it. So this is a nice reel. It looked like the the main gear. It looks like if you needed drag washers for that, you could probably substitute the Pen Jig Master ones. They seem to be about the same size. I'm not sure if you can't find the others. What I'm going to do now is just move this over to the side so that I can service that pole. And then this reel will be completed. So if uh, you have one of these, you, you'll know how to service it by this video. If you're thinking of buying one of these, I wouldn't discourage you. It seems like it's a nicely made reel. And if, uh, if you have one of these or any other reel that needs service and you're not quite up to it, then uh, I do repair reels by mail as well. And you can reach me uh, through email on the business card that follows this uh, video. So uh, regardless of uh, what your interests are here, I hope that this video has been helpful to you. And I uh, would... I hope that uh, it will enable you to keep your reels fishing for a long time. And if it's broken, I hope it enables you to give your reel a second chance. All right, so I just put a drop of oil into the pole. I didn't pull the pole out. You could if you like, especially if you find out it's sticking to one side or the other. Then you want to check the, the, the teeth on that pole. But for now, any reel that can turn like this is a champ in my book. So lightweight, 4 to 4.2 to 1 ratio. Kind of an interesting little way to set the dog on this one. Big uh, healthy gear system and uh, nice drags inside of it. So that's the Quantum Blue Runner Gold. And if you have one, uh, as I mentioned, you now know how to service it. If you're thinking of buying one, you now know how it's made. So I appreciate you watching. If you like the video, uh, please indicate that. Like it and subscribe if you want to see more. And with that, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.